there is a lot that we need to discuss in this video. Bitcoin has gone through a correction downwards and the market is completely fearful. It's seeming like a total bloodbath at this moment. But behind the scenes, there's a pattern playing out which is signaling that we soon might see an explosive crypto bull run up. And in addition to that, we have billionaires that are tweeting about Bitcoin and the mass media that's totally manipulating the public perception of crypto and Bitcoin right now. So we have a lot to discuss. And as usual, I have prepared a bunch of um, news updates, tweets and charts, which are backing up everything that I'm saying. And if you want to see more videos like this one, then make sure to hit the like button and to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be posting consistently throughout this crypto market cycle to help you to get an edge and to help you to maximize your profits throughout this cycle. Now, let's uh, get started. I'm going to pull up my screen. First, let's do a, a general health check of the crypto market right now. Bitcoin is hovering around 55,400. It might be a little bit higher, might be a little bit lower at the moment that you are watching this video. But what will stay the same regardless of whether you're watching this video in a few hours or a few days is that recently the crypto market has gone through quite a correction. Um, around the 26th of August, we saw a little pump to the upside. We were hovering around 64 thousand dollars 63,000 64,000 and in the past week we have gone through a correction downwards uh, with a bottom at somewhere around 53,000 dollars now we've gone up slightly from there but still the market seems to be a bloodbath and what is happening right now whenever we see periods like this the media loves to give their opinion about everything but what they do is they play into the tendency of humans to get triggered by two main emotions and these emotions are fear and greed um so one of the biggest emotion that the media likes to play into is fear uh, people are more motivated to take action out of fear um and what the media does is whenever the crypto market tends to go up and up and up and up in price, they love to claim that it's a bubble and that it's going to soon burst and that it's not sustainable. And when crypto goes down, then the market, the, the media loves to portray it, that crypto and Bitcoin is dead. And it keeps going from headline to headline to headline, bubble, 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 that, 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 bubble, 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 that, that, that. But it's never giving an objective um perspective on bitcoin it's never showing you the true facts they just want to play into fear and greed because that is what causes people to take action and actually read their articles so what i like to do is i like to decouple myself from what the media is saying and i like to go back to the fundamentals and what is a fundamental well if you look at bitcoin for example it's all coming down to the first principles of supply and demand. That's what we all learn at economics. There's a limited supply of Bitcoin, 21 million Bitcoin. On the other hand, there's an increasing demand. More and more individuals, companies, and institutions are now buying Bitcoin. And those that understand what is going on behind the scenes, understand that now might actually be one of the best times to buy. Here, Carl the Moon is saying the mood here is so bearish. And if you don't know what bearish means, it means that people believe that the market is going to go down. Why do we use the term bearish? Because when bears attack, they attack down. When bulls attack, they attack with their horns up. And that's why we call a, a, a market which is negative and people believe it's going to go down. We call it bearish. And when the market tends to go up, we call it bullish. So he's saying because so many people here are bearish, it is probably the best time to buy. Um, this also comes down to a famous saying of, uh, of Warren Buffett. And this saying is as following. Be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Usually the best time to scoop up really great assets at a discount is when there's blood on the streets, when nobody wants to buy that asset, when all of the newspaper articles are negative. 
that is the best time to scoop up really great investments at a big discount. And this might sound very simple, you know, it might sound very logical, but in reality, most humans are driven by emotion. Emotion leads their investment decisions. So you first need to decouple yourself from emotions. And the best way to do that is by really studying a particular asset class and drilling deep into understanding the fundamentals that drive the price of this asset. And in, in, the, in the case of Bitcoin, that's supply and demand, a limited supply, and on the other hand, an increasing demand. And usually this means that there will be a supply shock that will drive the price of Bitcoin up over the long term. Um, here, Quinton is basically reconfirming what I just said. The boring and depressing times is where the money is made. Not during the hyped and euphoric times. No, because that's when you're paying a massive premium on those assets, no matter it, whether it's Bitcoin or the S&P 500 or real estate or watches, you don't want to buy into the hype. Normally when something is hyped up, it's better to just wait for a bit for the market to cool down again. Here we see a chart that smart money is currently buying while the sentiment is at extreme fear. So the orange bars that you see here on my screen, those are that's the buying pressure of uh, Bitcoin, of the smart money index, uh, the, the, the big investors that are buying up Bitcoin. And you're seeing that right now we're seeing a lot of buying pressure from large investors. And I, I tend to believe that the best way to spot profitable trends in the market is to follow what the smart money is doing because usually they have some kind of insider knowledge or usually they have really good experience and analytics which they base their investing decisions on. And in this particular case, in the case of Bitcoin, the whales are the people that have been around for multiple market cycles. It's also the people that are running the institution. So we're seeing that BlackRock right now is entering the market. And in case you didn't know, BlackRock is the largest asset manager in the world. Right now, they're managing around nine or ten trillion dollars in assets under management. That is 10 with 12 zeros behind it. That's so much money that most people cannot even comprehend with their mind how much money that is. And when they're making their investment decisions, they are actually basing it on the, the analysis of their super artificial intelligence that they have created. BlackRock's AI has the most data points or has so many data points across so many different assets in the financial markets that it really gives them a crazy advantage of making really good investment decisions. And usually when BlackRock goes very heavily into an in investment space, it usually means that that asset will probably increase in value a lot over time. By the way, their super AI is called Aladdin. You can look it up. Um, that is, BlackRock is one of the companies that got into AI many years ago, a few decades ago, they already started developing their AI. And you can imagine like most companies are now slowly getting into AI, but they got into AI a few decades ago. And they have been feeding and training this AI with so many data points right now. And their AI is telling them to get into Bitcoin and to get into Bitcoin mining. Now, when we talk about smart money, I also often like to analyze what billionaires are doing. Billionaires are billionaires for a reason. They learned how to master the game of money. And um, here you see a tweet by a billionaire called Michael Dell. Maybe you know the company Dell. They produce uh, computers. And Michael Dell has recently been focal about Bitcoin on X. Uh, it has given a few hints left and right about Bitcoin um, and Bitcoin-related arguments. And now he's saying enjoy Bitcoin with a heart uh, emoji behind it. This is probably meaning that Michael Dell is buying the Bitcoin dip, but also he's hinting to others that this might be a really great time to buy yourself some more Bitcoin or some more Bitcoin miners or to increase your exposure to Bitcoin in any possible way. Because he has probably also studied this asset class and realizes that if you compare it to other assets like cash or stocks or bonds or real estate, Bitcoin still offers really great asymmetrical returns. So meaning 
a relatively high return potential with a relatively low risk. So when billionaires like Michael Dell start to give these subtle hints, um, then I think, in my opinion, that's a really great indicator of how much potential this asset class has. And you need to understand that billionaires like Michael Dell, they cannot directly say on X, like, guys, this is the time to buy Bitcoin. They can't because they have um, large governmental institutions like the SEC in the US that will sue people for giving financial advice or market manipulation when they give too direct uh, instructions to buy a particular asset. So what billionaires like Elon Musk or Michael Dell need to do is they need to give very subtle hints that cannot directly show that they're buying or they cannot uh, directly show that they're um, recommending a particular investment, but they do it indirectly. Now, let's have a look at the fear and greed indicator. So earlier we discussed that the best time to buy is when there's blood on the streets. Well, what we see is that we've gone through another correction. And we also see that uh, when we're looking at the crypto fear and greed index, which is an index which shows how greedy or fearful the market is right now, where orange is uh, fearful territory and uh, yellow is neutral, we're just coming slightly out of fearful territory entering into neutral territory but i would say retail the retail investors like the average investor like you and me well i'm not fearful i'm actually very optimistic right now but the average investor is very fearful um so this might mean that this is a great time to allocate more to your positions and to get some bitcoin at a big discount bitcoin moves in four-year cycles. Why does Bitcoin move in four-year cycles? Why does it not move in five-year cycles, six-year cycles, seven-year, 13-year cycles? Well, it all has to do with the Bitcoin halving event. Every four years, we see a Bitcoin halving event happening, which means that the Bitcoin that gets produced by all of the Bitcoin miners gets basically chopped in half. So if you would be mining one Bitcoin prior to the halving, then after the halving, you would mine half the amount of that, so 0.5 Bitcoin. And that's basically what is happening every four years. And this, mechanisms, this mechanism makes Bitcoin more scarce. And when something becomes more scarce, while well, the demand for, for that same thing keeps on going up, then it usually means that the price of that thing will go up over the long term. Of course, that's not a guarantee, but usually based on supply and demand economics, that's usually what happens. And when Bitcoin moves in these four-year cycles, it tends to move very cyclical and actually quite predictable. So when we look at the Bitcoin quarterly returns, so here you see a column of Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Um, we see that Q1 tends to be very positive or tends to be on average quite positive for Bitcoin with an average return of 56%. And Q4 also tends to be very positive with an average return of 88%. So imagine that Bitcoin would almost double from here. Um, so that Bitcoin would almost go to 100K before the end of this year, if we continue with this same average return that it has generated over the past four years. Of course, this also includes 2013, which was very early days. Bitcoin was a very young asset class. So maybe now it might be a lower return because Bitcoin is maturing more as an asset class. So we see a little bit less extreme volatility than in the early days of Bitcoin. But still, um, there could also be arguments made for a higher return this year. For example, you see in 2020, when we were in the bull market year, in the previous bull market cycle, we, see, we saw a 168% return in Q4. And... The arguments that can be made for such a high return, this bull market cycle, this Q4, could be that um, right now we're seeing a lot of institutional money entering the space. And up till now, Bitcoin has been mainly a retail dominated asset class. So meaning that the average investor like you or me were active in the market, but not really the institutions. But now we're seeing that BlackRock, Fidelity, Van Eck, Invesco, and all the large asset managers and all the many publicly traded companies are all pouring their money into this asset class. So maybe we'll see even higher returns this Q4, who knows? But one thing is sure, 
that September generally tends to be the worst month. And within the crypto space, we have a fun replacement word for September. We call it wrecked timber because many people get wrecked because they don't understand that September is part of the cycle and that it usually tends to be a bloodbath. So, of course, we are keeping a really great eye on the cyclical nature of Bitcoin. And we are aware that September is not usually the best month, but Q4 is just around the corner. And that might be the moment when finally we get rewarded for all our patience. Um, when we look at this chart, so Crypto Rover is basically dissecting the market into four different stages. We have the bull market the distribution phase, the bear market bottom, and we have the accumulation phase. Um, we just came out of the accumulation phase. Uh, then we saw the bear phase. Sorry, my bad. We saw the accumulation phase, the bear market phase, the bull market, which was a very short period. Um, and now we're entering accumulation phase. So it's now time to buy a bit more Bitcoin before we start to enter the bull market phase again this can be a very short period before we tend to start up again here we saw it as well so uh when the crypto bull market pumped for a little bit then we went into the distribution phase and then we went into bull market phase again um so yeah that might be a very short period before we go into bull market territory again here Another tweet, uh, I already mentioned that uh, September is often referred to as wrecked timber because people get wrecked during September because the market usually tends to go down. But October is known as pumptober or other people call it uptober. December, uh, sorry, November is uh, referred to as bullfember. Um, did I say December? No, I meant November is known as bullfember. And December is known as moon December. So this is all pretty uh, interesting. And I hope it's all going to play out. Of course, it's no guarantee. But usually we see similar patterns occur time and time again in the Bitcoin market. Now, in the introduction, I said that there was a pattern that is currently playing out in the crypto market or in the Bitcoin market, which is also signaling that we might soon see a very big bump in the crypto market. And this is the Wyckoff, the Wyckoff accumulation pattern. And what does this mean? Well, this is basically the pattern that shows that large institutions and wills are accumulating in the market right before the market goes up. So imagine if the market, if the institutions and the wills would load up all of their bags at the bottom of the market and they would just keep on buying and buying and buying and buying more and more and more and more, then the market would be very short lived. Uh, sorry, the market bottom would be very short lived and the price would shoot up straight away because all of these wills are pumping millions, hundreds of millions and billions into the market, driving the price up. So instead, they accumulate very slowly because this gives them more time to buy into the asset at the lowest possible rates, at the lowest possible prices. So this also often uh, coincides with some market manipulation because if the market starts to become too greedy and starts to go up, then again, these institutions and wills lose their ability to buy into the asset at, at the lowest possible rate. So when the market goes up too much, they tend to dump the market and they tend to crush the market for a, little, for a little bit so that they have more time to scoop up more cheap Bitcoin. And what we're seeing is that this Wyckoff pattern is now forming in the Bitcoin chart as well. So there's a few interesting um, points that they are often identifying within the Wyckoff pattern. Here you see them as well. But many people argue that we have just touched the spring so meaning that we've just dropped below the lowest support and generally if the Wyckoff pattern plays out it means that from here onwards we are going to see the market rally to new highs so let's hope that this Wyckoff pattern is now playing out we've seen the spring we're seeing another test then soon we might see the LPS which stands for the last point of support and then from here onwards the price of Bitcoin is going to pump 
So this gives you a little bit of an insight of how wills and how institutions are accumulating. J wills and institutions need to operate a little bit different from retail investors. They cannot just simply throw hundreds of millions or billions into the market because that would just simply drive the price up and they would cut themselves in their own fingers by driving up their own acquisition costs. So they need to manipulate the market and be a little generate like a range through which they can accumulate an asset at the lowest possible price. And you as an investor should realize that whenever this is happening in the market, whenever the market tends to go sideways, don't be fearful. It doesn't mean that Bitcoin or that particular asset is dead. No, it just means that the wills and the large institutions are accumulating more. And maybe that's a great sign for you that it's also time to accumulate more and to load up your bags while the price is still low so that you can also profit from the same run up as the institutions and the wills are profiting from. Now, let's discuss a few more things. Again, the money printer of governments all around the world is printing record amounts of fiat money right now. And most people spent... 40, 50 years of their life working for this fiat money that just gets printed out of thin air. Every single day, your fiat currency is losing money. So Bitcoin solves this solution. Why? Because Bitcoin has scarcity. You cannot print more Bitcoin. It has a limited supply of 21 million Bitcoin. And that is the reason why so many companies and institutions and individuals are flocking to Bitcoin as a solution to protect themselves against the increasing inflation. And while many governments around the world might be claiming that inflation in their economy is dropping, that is not actually true. Inflation is not dropping. When a country is releasing its inflation numbers and they're saying uh, this year the inflation is 3% and then next year they're claiming Okay, inflation this year is 2%. It doesn't mean that the inflation dropped. No, inflation is cumulative, meaning that if the previous year it's 3% and this year it's 2%, it's meaning that on top of the 3% of last year, the inflation increased with 2%. So prices keep on going up and up. And that's why we usually see that all your groceries, your rent, everything tends to become more expensive over time. And if you're holding euros, dollars, Japanese yen, or fiat currencies in your bank account, it usually means that life will only get more and more expensive over time. So what is the solution? To park your money into something that the government cannot print more of, and that's Bitcoin. And that's why Bitcoin was named the best asset class of the past decade because it generated around, what was it, 236% of annualized returns for its holders. And compare that to the average inflation rate of 2%. I mean, if you're holding money in the bank account, you're losing purchasing power every single year, 2%. At least in some cases, in many countries, it's even higher, 3 4 5%. In COVID years, we saw 10% inflation. But uh, if you're holding your money in Bitcoin, then you can outpace that inflation and actually buy even more. You increase your purchasing power instead of losing purchasing power. And again, this chart is pretty much showing what I just explained. So here you see the M2 money supply, which is uh, the total amount of fiat currencies in circulation in this case is the US dollar and you're seeing that that chart only goes up and up when more dollars are in circulation the purchasing power of every dollar uh, tends to go down and this doesn't only hold true for dollars but also euros yen pound all the fiat currencies on the other hand bitcoin has a fixed supply right now there's around 19.6 million bitcoin in circulation and the remaining bitcoin will be mined in the next 100 years. And after that, it's not possible to create more. It's truly a scarce asset. Now to wrap this all up, uh, Bitcoin for Freedom is saying the biggest bull run is loading, which I actually agree with. Why? Because rate cuts are coming, meaning when interest rates go lower, uh, money tends to be cheaper, more money flows into the market, driving the price of assets up. When that happens, when Bitcoin starts to go up, then retail is going to have FOMO. They're going to regret that they didn't buy Bitcoin at 53K, 17K, or at any of the lower prices that we saw earlier. So instead, they're going to buy at 80K, 90K, 100K, 100K plus, um, fearing that they're going to miss out on the entire bull run. 
and when that happens when more and more supply is uh, when more and more demand is going to hit the market while supply is very limited then we're going to see a supply shock that's going to drive up the price of bitcoin and then with all of the geopolitical inst instability around the world people are looking for a safe haven to park their uh, wealth and bitcoin is a really great contender for all of that um and with the current elections happening in the us um yeah bitcoin is is becoming an increasingly important topic on the uh campaign calendar and if we see a pro crypto precedent with favorable regulations we see an even further acceleration of bitcoin as an asset class and this will bring in even more institutional adoption we already saw that the bitcoin spot etf broke the record of fastest growing etf in history and i believe that we're going to see even more crypto related financial instruments that will be brought out this crypto bull market cycle which are going to bring in more money from the traditional financial system into the crypto market so that being said there's so much happening in the market right now even though it's a total bloodbath this is actually one of the best times to be in the crypto market and to expand your exposure to bitcoin in particular i believe to buy more bitcoin or to get more bitcoin mining machines uh, or in any possible way to to make sure that you accumulate more because i think we are preparing for the biggest bull market in history just like bitcoin for freedom uh, the person whose tweet i just read to you um, so now is the time to prepare yourself. This is, in my opinion, and according to my predictions, and if all the previous uh, market patterns tend to hold up, which they usually do, then this will be the final big dip, the final big correction, the final bloodbath before we see the big bump in Q4, before we see October, before we see Bullfember and Moonsember. It's time to get ready. So I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be posting consistently throughout this crypto market cycle to help you to get an edge. All right, peace out. See you in the next video.